know who Superman is? <laughs> Watch this. Oh! What is going on, guys? It's Brian Jackson, Men's Comics. And of course, we've got that Bolo show for you. That's right. This is the Be On The Lookout show where we are covering all your hottest new comic book day releases. We're covering those first appearances. We're covering those Reader Buzz books. Covering those Variant Buzz books. And then we're going to wrap it up at the end with Jack's long-term play that released this week. We're getting to it right now, starting with the first appearances this week. First book we're talking about is that Captain America number 25. We actually get a new Agent 13, huh? Yeah, yeah, new Agent 13. I don't know if this is really going to play on the market um, because certainly my, my kind of feeling when we get these new characters is that there has to kind of already be a level of popularity with the original. Um, I get sometimes kind of um, negative feedback for that uh, opinion because, you know, people want to be positive about something new and I'm not trying to be negative, but that's kind of how I judge whether or not to kind of buy into something. But, but time will tell. Captain America has really been kind of a stale book. Now, I haven't read the book, so I'm not, I'm not judging the, the writing. I'm just saying we haven't talked about it. It hasn't made uh, any sort of buzz. Uh, I think hitting this issue 25 it being a landmark, I was kind of like surprised that there wasn't more uh, buzz for it, but they're always just one hot storyline away with Captain America for getting the, from getting the market's attention back on that book. Yeah, I think the last time we talked about it was when he was Hydra. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately a lot of the discussion with that whole uh, series wasn't all that positive, but, but yeah, that was the last time really, I think Captain America was in the forefront of like, you know, secondary market buyers but we also got another first appearance in rorschach number two with the citizen right yeah now there's been some confusion uh especially like pre-release day because there have been characters called the citizen before especially within dc comics but but the biggest thing really that was talked about about this issue number two was that peach momoko cover b um which really with the wrapping up of her being able to work with outside publishers getting towards this uh, exclusive deal with Marvel. And we know the way with her being a part of the Young Guns program, um, it, it, I forgot what it was renamed, but um, you know, the, the original Young Guns program, um, we're gonna see a lot of covers from her on Marvel. So, you know, this being a, a, a Rorschach cover being in the Watchmen universe, I, it, I know there's a lot of Peach Moko covers, but if we're gonna see them, I really like when they're kind of outside of where we've seen her uh, in the past. And I have to say this cover is really high quality. I think it, it has a good chance of being a nice long-term uh, cover play uh, just on, on the cover price variant, which you, know, you gotta hold those for a long time, but uh, high quality, hot cover artist. And uh, you know, with a publisher, you're not gonna be able to see her working with in the future. Then the last one that we're going to talk about for first appearance this week is Hellions number six. What do we got in this one? Yeah, we got Locus Vile. Now, there's a lot of talk about this first appearance, and certainly first appearances within the X universe within the last couple of uh, months have really been popular. But uh, this X of Sword storyline, really not so much. Uh, there's been... Um, we talked about it, maybe it, it was underwhelming at first, and then m as more feedback kind of came in, you started to realize people weren't really digging it. Our feeling was kind of the feeling of the market in general. So whether or not characters from within the storyline um, are going to be something that Marvel's going to go with long term, we'll see. But either way, definitely going to be overlooked a bit because of some of that kind of like attention waning for this. That's going to wrap us up for the first appearances this week. Now we're going to shift right over into the Reader Buzz books. And here's one of those, what we call plug and play. It's always on the Reader Buzz when an issue comes out. And we got Batman issue 103. Yeah. And we talked about these cardstock variants. And this was the one that you and I were kind of laughing at where we were saying, if man, people love these cardstock variants to the point that they're buying, you know, plain clothes, Bruce Wayne. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely there's a lot of uh, interest as it's continuing with, uh, um, you know, the new characters and the tie-in run. Um, we talked about how there was talk about starting this Batman run with 101 kind of over at number one. So I really kind of caution people to, you know, don't sleep on these next few issues because this would essentially be the beginning of a new, new kind of series, a new arc 
uh, for James Tynan. And I think uh, with the way he's introduced characters, um, whether it's introducing further characters or continuing to develop upon characters, I think that these next several issues are of kind of note to pay attention to. Right, and sticking with another plug and play or automatic that you want, whatever you want to call it, but shifting over to boom, we got something that's killing the children number 12 that came out this week. Yeah, it, it's been a bit of a plug and play, uh, and it's certainly kind of increasing in, in sales and awareness um, by the month. But it's it's kind of a beast unto its own because the the way that this book is trending is really unlike any other book in the market in that, you know, we're seeing sales numbers increase as each passing month goes by. Um, the only two books I can think of that seem to be like garnering increased heat as the series kind of progresses would be Something's Killing the Children and probably Ice Cream Man um, for Image Comics. But um, it, this one also has that Peach Momoko 1 in 25. You notice we're talking about a lot of Peach Momoko today. Um, it has also last month with issue number 11, there was a blank variant, which I think was very well received. It's going to be a these blank variants for uh, that are releasing right now are going to be kind of slow to gain value and traction. People are going to overlook them. Um, I, my my speculation, I have no way of knowing this, is that they're probably underordered because again, the value of blank variants is getting those remarks and, and sketches at uh, conventions. And with no conventions in sight, I, I'm kind of speculating that people aren't putting in heavy orders on those. And uh, you know, Something's Killing the Children is certainly such a popular title now. It was smart of Boom Studios to bring out these these sketch covers because, you know, of course, that's something that people are going to look to do. They're going to want to get their favorite artist uh, to do, you know, the popular Erica Swatter, especially as this this is a property that continues to get more and more popular. But with issue number 11, you saw the blank variant, the regular blank with the trade dress. Issue 12, you get this kind of cool bloody look. I think it's a really unique kind of addition to the the uh, blank sketch variant. Yeah, so shifting over to IDW, this is an issue that it got delayed, right? It got pushed back a little yeah. bit. We're talking about GI Joe number two seventy five. Yeah, and you know, I kind of understand why after reading it today. Um, it is a book essentially full of action, just action scenes and and large layouts. Um, I'm sure that it took a while. Um, to complete, but this is the end of the snake hunt story that's been going on for 10 months. You don't see a lot of comics like really develop a story arc and with that kind of long-term storytelling. Now, admittedly, I think it did lose some people's interest. Maybe it was a bit on the too long side, but you got to realize how ambitious this story arc was. This was, if, if I was to tell you at the basis where we talked about it all those months back when we were originally pitching this as something to pay attention to, um, we talked about the fact that at the core, it was Cobra Commander thinking that he needed his own snake eyes. That's the key to beating the G.I. Joe. And he wanted to capture Sean Collins, who he believed to be the original snake eyes. Now, of course, Sean Collins is not the original snake eyes, is, you know, the mentee of the original snake eyes. And of course, there's also Dawn Moreno, who is the current snake eyes, the female snake eyes. So um, this has been playing out and... It, oh, it culminated, of course, as all of these kind of stories do in that end-all, be-all, huge battle um, at the end, which, you know, of course, good guys prevail. Um, but it, it, it was it was really kind of a double-sized, large issue. I think that it, it was a landmark issue uh, for G.I. Joe, um, and one that I think will hold importance over time. All right, next one. Here's one that just came out with the new author. You know, we're big fans of Rota Bones, but we got another book from that author. And Sea of Sorrow is number one. This is one that I picked up, excited to read, and then didn't get a chance to read it yet. Yeah, so this one has like all another one that has all the boxes going for it, right? All the boxes checked because it's got that one in 25 IDW incentive. So obviously there's some belief from IDW that this is a series that you know will have some commercial success largely i think that's due to what you mentioned with road of bones which was a proven commodity which had no cover b had no incentive variant um so vastly different release strategy here coming with the, the follow-up release um but on top of a one in ten incentive you've also got a one in 25 incentive and the one in 25 incentive very different kind of style variant i've heard a lot of talk about both a lot of positive and negative about the 125. Either way, it's polarizing. 
Um, so you've got the reader buzz, you've got kind of the double incentive, you've got the cover art discussion. So a, a lot going on for this book, no matter what it's doing in the immediacy, it's one to pay attention to, especially as issues two, three, and four come out and build these variants could be ghosts come in the coming weeks. So this is one I've got my eye on, you know, with independent books, it always takes a few weeks. You can never really tell right off the bat. Sticking with this indie comics, but no stranger to anyone that's been hot past few issues. It's been hot since the release actually, but we're talking about Ice Cream Man with Ice Cream Man number 21. Yeah, and what mentioned earlier, uh, you know, with something's killing the children that, you know, this is really the only series I can think of where like sales numbers are starting to build. There's momentum building. More and more attention is getting on the series. But this one is more built for it because it's an anthology series. It allows you to tell these kind of one-off stories featuring this character um, where you don't feel like you have to kind of come in. You can pick up starting right now. Uh, yes, you okay, you're going to miss, you know, some detail type stuff, but you're going to overall be able to pick it up, understand the story. And that's kind of the uniqueness um, and what has worked here, which is also why I'm very bullish on the upcoming Ha Ha Number One, the kind of spinoff series from the creative team. And I, I think that this one also, we mentioned Rorschach, we've talked about popularity of the Watchmen TV show. This one had like a Watchmen theme. A lot of these issues have had themes and kind of tropes that they've played into different genres. And um, that brings in new people. Uh, so, so if they're, you know, if Watchmen, you're a diehard Watchmen fan, but you haven't checked out Ice Cream Man, maybe that alone is enough of a reason for you to check this issue out. Right, now we're finally moving over into the big two again. And we got Star Wars with Star Wars Bounty Hunters, number seven. This, yeah, this series uh, really is going to probably become plug and play um, because Bounty Hunter stuff is just yeah. on fire. Thanks to Mandalorian. Yeah, it's just on fire. Um, the reader buzz, people are jumping on. It, it, the Star Wars market is changing daily. Uh, it's funny because you go back and look at some of our videos on Star Wars. I mean, it's almost outdated information because we were talking about, like, if you were to get into it right now, you would think, what are these guys talking about? Like, we're talking about, you know, people aren't buying these new characters. It takes time. You got to, you know, you got to be willing to hold them more. Now characters are coming out. And as soon as a first appearance in the Star Wars universe hits, almost all of them are hitting ten or fifteen dollars. And furthermore, you're starting to see, I think, retailers be a little slow to catch up to the demand of these Star Wars books. So you're seeing kind of Darth Vader, the regular Star Wars issues, as well as um, uh, the Bounty Hunter book, start to kind of run in a shortage. And we're seeing the late. Excuse me. We're seeing it. <laughs> Perp. and we're starting to see them run out of shortage and you're starting to see the late printings for those uh series continue to stack up as these series run on yeah no doubt i mean everything bounty hunter especially right now i mean it is on people's radar but this has been a fantastic series i mean without the heat from mandalorian if you guys haven't been reading bounty hunters definitely recommend you guys pick that up um sticking with marvel we also got symbiote spider-man king in black number one yeah, a lot of anticipation for this book. Um, it kicks off kind of the all these King and Black one shots and all these stories. I got a chance to check this one out. Um, it definitely delves deep into the uh, the symbiote realm. Made me do some research, which I like. Um, sometimes I don't like from like a smoothness of reading, uh, but uh, the character Mister E who appeared who first appeared in Marvel Spotlight number nine from volume two, which is a Captain uh, uh, Universe cover. Uh, it, it was a, a one-off character who like appeared and then died. Being introduced like right off the bat as kind of like a villain. I, I wonder where that's going to play in the larger story. I think it's going to take some time to kind of flesh out. Either way, I kind of expect to see some back issue movement on, on that uh, Marvel Spotlight number nine. Um, as people, you know, are looking to jump on whatever the next big thing is. And the thing about Donnie Cates is, because he's a comic book fan, and even though this book wasn't written by Donnie Cates, right, it's not it's not a Donnie Cates book, but it's part of his overarching overall story. Um, it, you never know what he's going to retcon, right? You never know what he's going to take, what he, what he, something that he read and enjoyed, um, and what he will, you know, kind of retcon it and bring it into a new universe. So, you know, Mr. E, who was not a, a symbiote, I don't believe, in his uh, first and only appearance, uh, was kind of brought into the symbiote world here with, with this issue. 
Uh, and also, it's worth noting, too, the super log variant uh, is getting a lot of attention. A regular price variant, just a unique cover. I would pay attention to super log when you see that name on previews order sheets. If you're looking at final order cutoff time, he's, he does some really like unique and different artistic styled uh, inspiration variants. And several of them have kind of popped off in the secondary market um, and, and kind of connected with fans. So that, yeah, I think it's, it's something to pay attention to in the future. Keeping up with the symbiote side, we also got Venom number 30. A lot of people have been looking forward to this issue as well. Yeah, you know what I got to say? Um, a lot of people will not be happy who read the issue um, with the end results because you get some fine. It's funny, you know, when I say that, you, in one sense, you get everything that people have wanted, right? They get some answers. You get some finality. I think Donny Cates wrapped the storyline up maybe better than we've seen him do um, in a long time. And then there's a great splash page teasing King and Black with the whole black, everything blacked out and, and Dylan and Venom and where are the stars. Um, but people who were invested maybe in Codex or in Anne Wang as uh, Agent Venom, you know, the realization that like those characters are in another universe and we're now going separate from them and we may not return to them. This may be it uh, makes people who were investing in those characters now feel like that's dead spec. But one thing we've learned is like, there's no such thing as dead spec, right? Two years from now, there could be a storyline that has to pull this stuff in. That could be the next enter the venom verse. Um, let's not forget that Enter, you know, an enter the venom verse series has already existed. <clears throat> so the reality is, we're just one kind of moment away from talking about these characters. And that's what kind of modern comic book collecting has become. Uh, so there's, there's ebbs and flows. And I know people want to get down on it. Um, the story as a fan, as a reader, Brian, I think you'll find you'll enjoy the, the story without, you know, the investment. Um, certainly if you were invested in Codex, um, you may feel like, ah, you may feel some sort of way. Next one we got going, the reader buzz is that girl walks alone at night. <laughs> girl walks alone at night, number one. Yeah, uh, so this is a really weird release. This comes from Behemoth, um, a very small publisher. It is an Iranian film that came out several years ago. And usually we talk about comics getting adapted into film, right? So this is an Iranian comic that was, or Iranian movie that was adapted into an American comic. I, I'm guessing for the purpose of trying to then get it adapted into an American movie. Um, very unique, being a, such a small press book, it wasn't, um, it, it wasn't readily available. It wasn't everywhere today. It ran at a shortage, selling for like twenty dollars uh, for cover A or B. Um, it's it's really interesting to talk about horror being hot, um, but it'll be interesting to see if two weeks from now those prices are able to sustain on the market because we've seen this kind of stuff before. If you're able to find one and you're not interested in this story, it's a great flip to pick up cover price and flip for twenty bucks. But um, it's that one I'd hold on to though. Yeah, yeah, it's way, yeah, it, it's one that would I'd be a little weary of, and especially you know being that like I said, I've never seen a you know four. I'm not saying that hasn't happened. But to my recollection, I haven't seen like a foreign movie that gets adapted to American comic. Uh, I don't, I don't know how that process um, would play out within the typical spec cycle that we see in modern comics. The last one we have on the reader buzz this week is the recount number one. Yeah, and this comes from Scout Comics. Um, Scout gets a lot of attention on their number ones. They also seem to roll out number ones on a weekly basis. I think there's a there's a cool cover that kind of like, you know, has like that Scarface kind of two-tone look that got a lot of attention. Um, but I also think part of it is just the polarizing title. Uh, the fact that our nation, eh, we're involved in recounts in our election. Uh, very timely title to release. I think it, it's one of those things that immediately makes people see it on a comic shelf and go, what is this? So people have been talking about this for about a week now. Um, and, you know, I want to see uh, 
Scout does an amazing job getting a lot of attention on these number ones. I want to see some of these series continue to build beyond initial release. With that being, with that being said, that wraps up the reader bus section. Now we're going to move in to the variant buzz. Kick off the variant buzz section. We're back with Star Wars, with Star Wars Adventures 2020 annual, the one in 10 incentive for it. Yeah, so this isn't my long-term play because this is a tough book to predict, but this is my favorite book. This is the book I've been watching for a couple of weeks. Um, I'm not the most knowledgeable Star Wars person. So I don't see a cover and go, um, yeah, there's never been a cover for this character or there's been a lot of covers for this character, which is usually those are determining factors. Um, but this cover passed the eye test. I love annuals and one shots and those kind of like spinoff books that IDW puts out because they get totally overlooked and ignored. Um, and then because, you know, this is a character who showed up in the Mandalorian, um, and is a, a, a character that with what we're talking about with all of this, you know, the Star Wars popularity and people jumping on this character, that character, and the other character, um, I, I, I'm not surprised to see this one selling for $25, $30 today on release day. I think um, there's a good chance this thing could be $50, $60 by next week. Um, I would not be surprised by the end of the week for people to see this one on their uh, favorite, like, top. 10 hot 10 type lists and shows right the next couple ones on the variant buzz we got those later printings starting with avengers number 36 we get a second print for that one yeah avengers number 36 which came out a while ago um we get a second print this is going completely under the radar not a lot of people talking about it but it's worth noting because of course avengers 36 is hot this is that kind of black panther moon knight uh team up so i think this one will have a lower print it's a good long-term hold on this one yeah, the next one's one that just came out recently, got some buzz. We just had issue number seven. But we have Darth Vader number six, second print. Yeah, first appearance, cover appearance, um, buzz on the series, everything going for it. Um, no surprise. This one's a winner already. Yeah. Same with, we keep talking about this one. It seems like it should be more than the fifth print. But we got Strange Academy number one with the fifth print out this week. That's right. Sketch cover of the original cover. Um, you know, it, we've seen these things work at this point. Um, it's going to get overlooked. People are going to feel uh, redundancy and all of those natural feelings, but it never ceases to amaze me. You can go back and look at any other major key. Um, people will start chasing these books for four or five, six times cover. If this becomes a back issue, it just in general, Strange Academy number one in demand if a TV show is announced, anything like that. Um, so this is definitely a, a grab and put away book. Yeah, we got one more Marvel late printing that came out this week, and that was that Venom number 27, fourth print. Right, so again, you know, and weighing on the cover as Agent Venom, uh, you know, you get that kind of first appearance. Now, again, with issue 30, you can feel how you want to feel about it. Um, but those kind of long-term play people, um, I think, will be more than happy to grab that and throw that in a, a short box or a long box and hold that one because, you know, you get that first appearance, cover appearance, late printing, low print, um, again, you got to skate where the puck isn't. Yeah, and then this next one would be my Mr. Deeds sneaky pick, and that's the Faithless 2, number six, that Jack Incentive. Super sneaky pick. Um, this is an underrated series. It's a series that people look at that largely as a gimmick. They don't realize that the metrics on, like, Netflix are showing that, like, erotic television shows are extremely popular because you have a lot of women at home during the day, especially in the pandemic. Uh, you know, a lot of us men who do these speculating decisions, we don't think about those kind of counterparts. Faithless is a, is a you know, an erotic story that kind of has everything that people like right now in horror as well as these kind of uh, you know, erotic story. I hate to overuse that term again. Um, on top of it, extremely popular cover artist. You're talking about volume two, uh, issue six, you're later. It's going to be ignored. It's an incentive. Uh, and it's, it's Jock working outside of his like typical lane. So I really like this one as well. Yeah. And it's kind of weird because I know a lot of times they were picking female artists and it's for this series. And it's great to see Jock. I mean, usually if you're na Jock's name, you know, ears go up, but this one I didn't see him hear a lot about, and yep. it's 
probably one of the best books I think of this week. But the last one we're talking about is another boom book. And that's that one to future number 13. We got that Justine Franey variant. Yeah, so whether you're talking about the virgin cover B uh, colored version, or you're talking about that incentive uh, kind of like line art sketch variant, uh, either way, uh, we talk about you know, the exclusive kind of like 20 cover deal that Peach Momoko had signed uh, with Boom Studios a while. It was immediately piggybacked with a very similar deal with Justin Franny. And this is kind of like the fruit of that. I think this is going to be overlooked. I think the Momoko, somebody's telling the children, he's going to get more attention today. And this could be one to pay attention to long term because once in future, it is a monster. And it, it's doing well in and of it, itself and on its own. Um, but I, I think, you know, that shadow that kind of looms within like the Boom Studios stable from Something's Killing the Children sometimes gets a book like this overlooked. But uh, don't sleep on it. I really, really like this one. I think it's going to have some stakes power yeah i think once in future itself as a series is kind of overlooked That's what I'm overshadowed saying, yeah. i guess you could say by something's killing children some of those other big series that recently come out from boom still a great series and this is a great issue a great and franey star on the rise like everyone says but yeah we had a big big list this week we had a quite i mean quite a few books especially Absolutely. within that reader buzz variant buzz but we still have one more to talk about and that's jack's long-term play and this week for jack's long-term play we got a second print as well but we are talking about that captain marvel number 22 second print yeah we're doing a bit of a double down here with this uh captain marvel 22 because we've already talked about as a long-term play captain marvel uh 23 and which was the the first kind of full appearance of the characters that you're seeing uh, featured on the cover of 22. We talked about this. We said, be on the lookout for this. We talked about this book on the last call show. Um, this was one we, we mentioned a couple times because it has that weird um, first appearance situation that really is only similar I, that I can think of um, to Miss Marvel within the Captain Marvel series. And I wonder if that's kind of what they're trying to do with this Captain Marvel, being that it's Captain Marvel, uh, this these characters were teased and shown on social media far before their introduction, talking, of course, about uh, OVE and, and Bridget. Um, they were uh, then um, kind of brought in a little bit earlier than expected. Uh, and then again, the first full appearance with 23, everybody jumps on 23. That's a hot book. Um, people are stacking those and really stocking that book in hopes of some long-term success. And then this book gets solicited with this cover. Now, look, people were on top of it. So it's, it's a $10 book right now, which is still, I mean, not to be slept on. That's double cover price plus right off the bat. Um, but I think long-term, as wherever these characters go, I think this is going to be a book uh, that's going to raise some eyebrows, but certainly it's going to have a lower printing than uh, Captain Marvel 23. It, it all question is whether or not you go by the, the, the kind of theory of release date versus release number, and which one is kind of more important for a first appearance, and then also how much you value first cover appearance, because of course this is the first time these characters feature on the cover. So all of that is going to play in. These are, of course, legacy characters. You're talking about, you know, um, you know, children of, uh, you know, Psylocke and, and Namor. Uh, you know, you're talking about um, characters that are, are have a good chance based on what we tend to like and invest in. And here's the other thing. I'm, I've said this before when I talked about Captain Marvel 23. I'm done sleeping on this series. There seems to be a readership for it. There seems to be a... a, a collecting base that believes in um some of the characters that have come out of here and there's a higher success rate uh for some of the characters that have come in this captain marvel miss marvel kind of uh storyline uh, that has kind of outweighed a lot of the other uh marvel series so uh definitely you know this is one that i'm grabbing uh and putting it in kind of looking at long term uh, i know that some people will be tempted to pick them up for four dollars and flip them and take their you know thirteen dollars but you know that's a that's a two dollar profit game that in my opinion not worth your time so uh, you know if you missed out on captain marvel 22 this is a great one to grab you know it's a great one for your collection this is a great one in my opinion to slab and hold for some time um, and you know and if you're one of those speculator investors uh especially if you've got 
you know, a nice stack of, of Captain Marvel 23s, this is one I think you should be on the lookout for. Yeah, it's it's great because it seems like whenever Captain Marvel characters pop off, it's it's a it's a double down also just because Captain Marvel seems it's not super low printed, but comparatively to to Marvel books, it's, it's yeah. on the lower print run side. So absolutely, um, that's another great one. So there's Jack's long term play for this week again. As always, let us know in the comments what books did you guys pick up this week. Let us know what your pick of the week was, whether it's speculation wise or reading wise yeah absolutely i always love the reading side of it so let me know recommend a book that you guys thought was the best read of this week because i'm always anxious to hear that but also make sure remember three up three down we got that canto giveaway so make sure you go watch that that new york city comic-con canto exclusive we also got that ross ritchie giveaway that's about to close so if you haven't entered that make sure you watch that ross ritchie interview right Absolutely. And definitely uh, be on the lookout. Stay tuned. We've got another interview hitting the channel uh, in just a few days with Mark London from Mad Cave Studios, both the writer of several hit series like Knights of the Golden Sun, Honor and Curse, as well as Battle Cats, but also founder and CEO of Mad Cave Studios. And we've got some giveaways in that as well. So this has been a week of giveaways on Simpleman's Comics. So make sure you are checking out these videos and participating in these giveaways. Very, very, very easy to get involved. Yes, sir. And with that being said, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Nowadays, nothing really is. Only one of me and nobody's like me. Phone ring.